Hi there, Chris, Chapman the Cap, Motor Legends. The new Schuberth C5 helmet has now technically been released. So what we're going to do today, I'm going to compare the C5, look at the features of the C5 and compare it with the current market leader, the Shui Neotec 2. We did do a video about the C5 a couple of months ago, but it had only been up for a couple of days when Schuberth told us or asked us to take it down because apparently we shouldn't have been using the prototype helmet for a video. Nobody had told us that, but c'est la vie. What particularly upset me was that I had spent 80 pounds on a miniature drum set for a two second insert in that video. And the video was only up for two days. So we've decided to feature that drum roll again in this video. So Graham, please, drum roll. Smile, please, Graham. Anyway, let's go over the C5. The Schubert C5 has now pretty much hit the shelves. Some months ago, Schubert sent us a sample to look at and play with, but it's now officially been released. So the time is right to compare, in our view, the C5 with the current market leader, the Neotech 2. What I'm not going to do is go out for a ride on it, in it. And that's not because it's so darn cold out there. It's because I'm not sure how relevant it is. Some retailers, some YouTubers I do know, go out and ride in the helmet and they've got sensors and monitors and microphones in the helmet to measure things like noise. Personally, I just am not convinced that that's valid because the way a helmet works is very individual. It's all about the shape. So I could go out in a helmet, it might work perfectly for me because it fits my face beautifully, so it blocks out the noise and so on. But that doesn't mean it's gonna work for you. There are just so many variables in terms of how a helmet performs. Variables to do with your height on the bike, how it fits obviously, whether you've got a screen or not, whether you've got a sat nav. So in my view, a test ride, whilst it's not irrelevant, it is not the acid test about whether a helmet is gonna be right for you. A journalist, a journalist can go out and ride a motorbike and report back on what that bike is like to ride. And I think we can all listen to that, watch that, and get a view as to whether that's our kind of bike. But I believe it's different with clothing. No one can tell you, for example, that there's a brand or a model of shoe or glove that's going to be particularly comfortable for you because that's going to be all about your foot shape or your hand shape. Once the C5 has been on the market for a while, we will develop a view because we'll have our customer feedback and that will tell us what the helmet is. And probably at that time, I will record another video giving you the thoughts of our customers. But that's some way down the road. Right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about the detail of the helmet. I'm gonna talk about the good points of the C5 and the bad points and the same with the Neotech. I'm gonna basically compare the two helmets. But what I can't do, I'm afraid, is tell you which helmet is gonna work best for you. Until a few years ago, Schubert pretty much owned flip lids. They had dominated the flip lid market with helmets like the C3 Pro, and then following on from that, the C4. Those helmets became the go-to choices for the police, for professional riders, for couriers, for long distance commuters, for international travelers. Shui then released the Neotech 2, and that was a significant step up for the Japanese company, a significant step up in many ways from the Neotech 1. And their aim was very much to take on Shubath. In many ways, it did exactly that. It was and is a very good helmet. Of course, what then transpired was that the C4 was a bit of a letdown. It wasn't quite the helmet that everyone expected it to be. Problem was that Shubath had done no road testing at all with that helmet. They'd only tested it in the internal wind tunnel. One of the greatest problems with the C4 was because it had a large visor, because it was a slightly sporty helmet with a taller and a wider visor, the pin lock couldn't clear the screen. And that's just something that you could not tell in the wind tunnel. If they had road tested the helmet, I think they would have discovered that very quickly. But one of the issues was they hadn't done enough testing on the helmet. The C4 was the first major release of the new venture capital owners of Schubert. And my view is that they just rushed to market. In fact, I know that they were putting pressure on the company to get this helmet to market. That didn't help. The other thing was that they moved the company from West Germany to East Germany. And 
none of the company's staff, pretty much no one, went from West Germany to East Germany. And what that meant was, as they were potentially making mistakes with the helmet, there was no one there to tell them that that's what they were doing. But I think that Schubert has taken on board the mistakes they made with the C4. They know where they went wrong. With the C5, I think they are ready to step back into the cage in an attempt to regain that crowd, that crown rather. I think therefore it's time to put the past behind us. With, for the C5, we're seeing this as a new beginning. We're going to judge it on its merits rather than on the errors of the past. It's time, in our view, to wipe the slate clean. Two peas in a pod is how we see these helmets, and that's not a coincidence. When Shui was developing the Neotech 2, they tilted their head very much at the C3 Pro because at that point the C4 hadn't been released. Now that Schubert have created the C4, sorry, now that Schubert has created the C5, they have very much tilted their head at the Neotech 2. So no wonder the two helmets are fairly similar. But in so doing, I think Schubert have gone back more to the C3 than the C4, and that's understandable. The C4 wasn't a great success, but the C4 was also quite a sporty helmet. And with the C5, I think Schubert have gone back to their roots. This is very much a touring, commuting, adventure helmet. In terms of the details, both helmets have what we call a composite shell. In other words, a mix of carbon fiber and fiberglass. A fiberglass, basically a fiberglass shell, and then there will be layers or strands of carbon fiber to strengthen it. The difference in weight between the two helmets is pretty marginal. In fact, technically, the Schubert is a little bit heavier, but that may be accounted for by the fact that it's got more internals for the Comset system. Nonetheless, Schubert are quite proud of the fact that they have reduced the weight of this helmet over the C4 in the same size by about 55 grams. Not a huge deal, that's about the weight of a tennis ball, but if you can save weight on a helmet without detracting from it in any other way, that's got to be a good thing. In terms of protection and safety, for a while the C5 is going to have an advantage, and it will have an advantage because it's the first flip lid helmet on the market to be 2206 accredited. Now 2206 is the new safety standard, and it's quite a step up from the existing 2205 standard. I have to say that we have no qualms about the protective qualities of the Shui. Shui and RI are up there, they make the safest, most protective helmets on the market. But for now, it has to be acknowledged that the Schubert meets the new standard, and right now, the Shui doesn't. I think we can anticipate that perhaps as soon as the end of next year, there will be a new helmet from Shui. I'm assuming that's going to be called the Neotech 3. And we'll just have to wait and see what upgrades that helmet has, because guess what? They're going to want to very much take on and improve upon the C5. If we start to look at some of the details, both helmets, we've got a demister here for the screen. And that was what we had on the C4 and the C3 Pro. But what we now have on the C5, we have a second chin vent. That's going to potentially allow the helmet to demist more effectively because when it's cold and there's heat inside, inside the visor, we're going to get more cold air. So I think it's going to be more effective at demisting, but it's also in hot weather going to allow the helmet to cool down faster or cool the rider down faster. On the brow, we have a two position vent on both helmets. So quite a similar arrangement. In the back of the helmet, we've got very similar looking exhaust vents built into this little spoiler. That's progress again for Schubert because on neither the C4 nor the C3 Pro did they have such an arrangement. They just had the air venting through the lining and that's not going to be as effective as it coming out here. So that signals quite a step forward for Schubert. I think this is going to be as well vented, maybe even better vented than the Neotech 2. It's certainly going to be the best vented Schubert ever. Both helmets come with Pinlock 120s. One of the problems with the C4 when, they, when Schubert launched it was that they put in a look-alike pin lock. It wasn't up to the job and it was a mistake and that contributed to that fogging issue that I was talking about. Both these helmets come with pin lock 120s. That's as good as it gets. And to tell the truth, at this kind of price, at this end of the market for premium helmets like this, that's nothing less than I would expect. Both these helmets come with drop-down sun visors. In the case of the 
C5, you've got this slider at the base of the shell, the same as every other Schuberth flip lid. On the Neotech, there's a slider here on the side of the helmet. Both have removable chin curtains, and that's important because the chin curtain is an integral part of making a flip lid as quiet as it can be. But there may be times, perhaps it's particularly hot, or perhaps you need more air in on a cold day because the helmet is misting. There may be times when you want to remove the chin curtain, so in both helmets it's easily removable. Both helmets have, have micro ratchet straps for attaching, so no D-rings on these helmets. What Schubert have done with the new helmet, however, they have moved the chin strap forward in the helmet. And that's important because it has to be acknowledged that the position of the chin strap is technically a weak point of a flip lid helmet. And it's a weak point because this front chin piece, you can't attach the strap to that, obviously. And what that means is that you have to, in some ways, move the chin strap further back than you would want. And that can come into conflict with some people with their, their Adam's apple. So that's a weak point of flip lids, and that's why, the, that's why flip lids for some people simply don't work. So what Schubert have done here, they've moved the chin strap as far forward as they can to try to alleviate that problem. The Schubert has a system that the Shui doesn't. In fact, no one else uses this system. It's a system called AROS, and that stands for, it's A-R-O-S, that stands for anti-roll-off system. And what happens is the strap here, the chin strap, that strap is then attached to two straps that rivet in to the back of the helmet. And what this means is that in an accident, there's no way the chin strap can be pulled forward over the chin. So the helmet cannot come off because it is secured basically into rivets in the back of the helmet. The Aros system has become somewhat of a Schubert trademark. They've done it for many years across all of their helmets. Now, it's not common for helmets to come off, but it can happen, we've seen it in MotoGP at great cost. So even though it's not a common issue, it's nice to know that if you have an accident in the Schubert, either with the front open or closed, the helmet is not gonna come off. What both helmets have, the Neotech has had it for a while or ever since it came out, but it's new for the C5. The Neotech has a lock position and technically you need a lock position to be able to ride a flip lid open or to do so legally. Schubert's have never had that. I've never thought it was a big problem because I have seen over the years many, many police riders riding their C3s and C4s and their C3 Pros with the front open. So I don't think anyone's ever going to get into trouble for that. But technically now with the C5, there is a lock position on the side here. And what that means is that that locks the visor up. It can't come down if you hit a pothole. So that enables you legally to ride with the helmet open. The C5 has a better, what we call, crack position. Crack position, I must admit, always sounds awful, but basically, it's, it's also known by some people as an urban position. And what it means is that if you want a bit of extra air to come in to the helmet, but not a lot, maybe you're just getting a little bit hot, um, maybe the helmet is not clearing, you just want to open it up a little bit to let a little bit more air come in, you want to be able to have the detente hold it in a fairly low position. So that's a very good, very handy crack position. The Neotech, and I think this is a significant weakness on the Neotech, that's its lowest position. That's quite a bit higher. I think as soon as the wind hits that, it's going to knock it down. It's going to allow too much air in. So advantage to the Schubert here in that it's got a much better crack position. The C5 has another little trick up its sleeve that no other flip lid helmet has. And it's this. If you are riding along with the visor in this position, you stop somewhere, let's say you go to a petrol station and you want to lift the chin piece up to go in and pay for petrol, you do that. When you return, you pull the chin bar down to close the helmet and the visor stays in the same position. Now, that's pretty clever. But it reminds me a little bit, what concerns me is that it's similar, it's a similar but different arrangement to something that Shark did when they released the Evo 1 helmet. And they were very proud of this, how the visor moved actually as you were bringing the chin bar round, the visor lifted to, to clear the chin bar. The problem was that that did not work and it caused Shark 
untold problems and it took many years for them to get over that and to overcome the embarrassment and the reputational damage. Now, like that innovation, this is one that I cannot believe that anybody ever asked for. I personally cannot see why anyone would be bothered if you lifted the chin bar and put it down, why would anyone be bothered about having the position that it was in before? If it does work, fantastic, that's an addition and it's a nice, neat feature. But if for whatever reason it does not work, I think this is going to prove a major headache that Schubert neither wanted nor needed. Talking of major headaches, let's look at the fit of the helmet. Schubert has changed the shape of the C5 from the shape of the C4. The C4 was quite a sporty helmet. It didn't fit particularly well and it just didn't seem to work as well when you were in a sit-up position on a naked or some kind of sit-up or adventure bike. So with the C5, they've gone back, again as you might expect, to mirror the shape or to have a shape, an internal shape that's a little bit more like the C3. But our initial examinations, our initial experiments, as it were, as it were suggest that the shape of the C5 is similar, but not the same as the C3. Now, the C3 was quite a round helmet, round helmet in terms of the shape of the head, but also in terms of the skull. And for us, that works really well. It suited people with rounder and wider heads, heads a little bit like mine. I love shoey helmets, but I just can't wear them. They are too narrow. And what happened therefore was that the C3 became the go-to helmet for those who found the Neotech just a little bit too oval. Because if you have a round head, what's gonna happen with a Neotech is that it's gonna put pressure on the sides of the helmet here. What we're convinced about is that what they've done with the C5, it's still slightly round, but it's got less, as it were, of the St. Paul's dome in terms of the internal shape going up to the helmet, and it's more the pitch roof of, say, Notre Dame. And what we think Schubert has done, and I think we can understand this, they've moved a little bit more towards Shuey. Shuey's the market leader, so they've copied Shuey a wee bit. They've gone more in that direction, so they've made it a little bit less round, and obviously we can understand that. But it's going to be less good, therefore, for people who have those rounder, wider heads, and only time will tell, therefore, whether this was a really smart move. In one area, there has always been clear blue water between Schubert and Shuey, and that's been our, in our ability to change the cheek pads and the headliners on the Shuey to get a more customized fit. We've been able to do it on the Shuey. It's never been a Schubert thing. And the problem with the Schubert is, if somebody came in here to buy a Schubert, they'd put it on, it either works or it doesn't. If it doesn't work, nothing we can do. We need to move on to another helmet. And that doesn't happen with a Shuey because we can do a certain amount of adjustment. And I think that has been a weakness in the Schubert armory because when you are paying, for a helmet like this, for example, 500 pounds, you expect it to fit properly. And our ability to custom fit the Neotech 2 has made it a very appealing proposition. It does work. We're able to send people out of here with a, provided they've not got a really wide head, we're, enabled, we're able to give people a very cozy, perfect, snug fit. When we were talking to Schubert a couple of years ago about our wish list for their next helmet, which I think even we guessed was going to be the C5, we told them that adjustable cheek pads for custom fitting was at the very top of our wish list. And the good news is that that is now part of the C5. We are going to be able to custom fit the helmet. In fact, in theory, we'll have to see about the practice yet, but in theory, we may have even more adjustability on the Schubert than we do on the Shuey. Because with the Shuey, what we get, we have the ability to change the cheek pads. We can make them thicker or thinner. So if you have a slightly jowly face, we can put a thinner cheek pad in so it's not putting too much pressure on them. Or we can put thicker ones in if you've got more of a kind of pear-shaped face, face. On the head, we can put a thicker or thinner liner in to bridge the gap between sizes. So if you've got someone who's somewhere between a medium and a large, we can take a large and put thicker pads in to make it closer to a medium, or we can take a medium, put thinner pads in and make it closer to a large. So we can plug each size with two different sizes. With the Schubert, there's going to be a different system. You can obviously change the cheek pads. So the same accommodation of wider faces and thinner faces, we can do that with the, with the Schubert because we're going to have changeable cheek pads. But 
in theory, we will be able to change the shape of the helmet because what we're going to have is pads here on the side of the head that can be changed and a pad here at the back. So when you want to create a rounder helmet, what you do, you put a thicker pad in here. That means that the front to back space has been reduced. And then you put thinner pads on the side, which means the head, there's more space side to side. If you want to create a more oval helmet, you put a thinner pad at the back, therefore elongating the front to back length, and you put thinner or thicker pads on the side, so it becomes a narrower helmet. So I think that is potentially a great system. There are a couple of problems, or well, one major problem. It's only going to apply to sizes medium to XL. So it's very clever, but it's a shame that you can't do that in the outlying sizes. You can only do it in the central sizes. We're gonna actually have to wait to see how it works because obviously we know the theory, but I'm not expecting Schubert to release the liners until a month or two after the helmets have been in the market. Nevertheless, one has to applaud Schubert for doing what they've done. They've broken the way they've done things. They've innovated. And I think this system in theory could be very clever. However, there's always a however, there is a fly in the ointment. And it is this. The Shui service is free to retailers and therefore free to customers. Because what happens is when we change the pads in a Shui, we send them back and we get a credit. So it costs us nothing. And obviously we don't charge the customer. With the shoe berth, the cheap pads and the headliners are going to be chargeable. And on one level, we don't find that acceptable. If you're paying this kind of money, 500 pounds, 600 pounds for a helmet plus the comms, I think it's cheeky to expect customers to pay extra to get a custom or a, a proper fit. It's just not the way it should be done. And we as a company don't like the idea of sending somebody out of the showroom in a helmet that we know is not perfect, especially when they've paid that kind of money. So what we as a company are going to do, and this is just us, it's the way we want to do it, we are going to swallow the cost of the liner. So there will be no cost for custom fitting the C5 here. But I think this is going to be a slightly wider problem for Shoebirth in general, because already most dealers out there, most shoey dealers do not offer a custom fitting service. And they don't offer it even though the cheap pads and headliners are totally free. So if Shoebirth is expecting that their dealers are going to suddenly become keen on helmet fitting when they've got to pay for the liners. I just don't think that's going to happen. I think most of them are going to head off into the hills. So I think it's a shame. And I think it's a shame because on a helmet like this, a helmet that is intended to be quiet, it's important, it's vital to get a proper fit. It's got to be a really snug fit. And that's why it's important to be able to change the cheek pads to make them thicker or thinner to get the head to headliner right. The Schubert technically in the wind tunnel is delivering an 85 decibel noise rating at I think, I think it's 100 kilometers or 85 kilometers an hour on a naked bike. It's an impressive figure. It's as good as any Schubert that's gone before, but you're only gonna get that level of quietness if it fits properly. Let's talk a little bit about the comms capability of the two helmets. The Shui has what I suppose I'd call a semi-integrated system on the Neotech 2. You pull panel off at either side and the aerial goes in here, the buttons go in there. It was a system that Shui had developed with Senna, works incredibly well. Shubeth had taken a big leap when they introduced a proper plug and play system on the C4. That was a truly integrated system. Very clever. There were a couple of slots in the bottom of the neck roll. You put the battery in one, you put the brains in another. And basically the helmet was pretty wide. It had the microphone in, it had the earphones in. You were good to go. Unfortunately, like many things on the C4, the system didn't work quite as well for various reasons as it was meant to. So it was a great idea, slightly poorly executed. But with the C5, Schubert have made another quite significant step forward. It's an even simpler system than the C4. What you're going to get, you have to pay extra for this, but you'll get a brains module like this. This is actually from the M1. So the system is very like the system on the current M1. There's a panel here at the back of the helmet that you will take off and this will just plug 
in there. In terms of the buttons, the control panel, similarly, you will take this panel off here and you will have a set of buttons. This is also from the M1, but the principle is the same. That will slide in there. There are no wires attached, so there are not going to be any problems in terms of wiring. This operates wirelessly in talking to the brains of the system. We like this new system a lot. It's going to be super easy to use. The only other thing you need to do, there's a microphone that will come in the pack and you will slot that in here. It's a short boom microphone, but according to Schubert on their launch video, it should take less than 30 seconds. I suppose if you really know what you're doing, it should take less than 30 seconds to get all of these bits in before you're ready to go. There's another, in some people's eyes, major step forward with the system that Schubert are using on the C5. It's that the basis for the system is a Senna 50, whereas on the Neotech, that's the Senna 20. The thing about the C50 is that it is mesh compatible. Now, for some people, mesh is or seems to be a big deal, and others are attracted to it. They won't understand what it is, and they will probably never use mesh. But mesh is right now one of those buzzwords, and talk is, it seems to me a little bit like laminated. Everyone thinks laminated is better, so they have to have it, even though for some people it's not better. Mesh is one of those words. Talk is that that's what you need to have, so everybody thinks they need mesh. Reality, in our view, is a little bit different. I think the only benefit of having mesh is if you ride frequently with large groups of people, so 10, 12, 15 people, because the number of people that you can talk to on mesh is almost infinite. But because everyone thinks it's better, everyone thinks they must have one. Most of us, or most riders, are not going to need it, because most of us will ride with one other rider, two other riders, sometimes a maximum of three riders. And for groups like that, there will be little benefit. You almost certainly won't increase your torque distance and one of the problems with mesh is that you substantially reduce your torque time. It uses more energy, so you get about two thirds of the time on mesh as you do with Bluetooth. So in general, as a company, we are not, I have to say, and probably it's the kind of customers we have here, we are not huge fans of mesh. We know people love mesh, but for most people, we think it's an indulgence. The downside in the context of the C5 is that mesh systems are more expensive. For a mesh system, the system that's going into the C5 is not massively expensive, but when you compare it with the system in the Neotech 2, it is quite a bit more expensive. So on the Neotech 2, the system, the SRL system, the SRL 2 system is 260 pounds. This system for the C5 is 350 pounds. I should add that on both of those costs, if you buy the system at the same time as you buy the helmet, you will save the 20% VAT. So the 260 and 350 are the maximum prices. Now, so on one level, if you want mesh, that's not a huge amount to pay. But if you are the kind of rider who just wants a comms so that you can take phone calls, listen to music, get instructions from the satnav, for example, that's a lot of money to pay. There's also an issue. A lot of people who come in here, they want matching helmets. They want their wife to have, in this case, a C5 as well. So they're going to have to pay out £700 for the ability to talk to one another front and back of the bike. And I think that that is pretty chunky money. But what I'm very much hoping is that not far down the road, Schubert will release a new system, a kind of basic system as opposed to this advanced system that will be based on something like the 20, that will be Bluetooth only. This is the fight for the heavyweight world championship title. In the red corner, we have the current champion, the Shui Neotech 2. In the blue corner, we have the challenger, the Schubert C5. Both of these are world-class contenders. The Neotech has proven itself in the ring. It's reliable, it works, it fits, it's comfortable, it's quiet. The Schubert is in some ways the unknown underdog, although it has to be said that it comes from a pedigree stable. Schubert edges the Neotech on venting, the clever visor memory, the Aros strap system that stops the chin bar coming undone. The changeable liners look very interesting. If we can indeed, as Schubert suggests, we will be able to, if we can change the shape of the inner helmet. 
but we can only do that on limited sizes. And the fly in the ointment, as I've mentioned, is the chargeable nature of changing those liners. The comms in the C5 is super clever, really easy to use. I think that's a great step forward. But as a company, we are not convinced that mesh was the way to go. I think for many people who want to use comms, it's simply going to be too expensive. The price difference between the two helmets is pretty marginal. And it's so little that I cannot see cost being a likely factor in making decision about which helmet you want. Both are going to cost in the region of 500 to 600 pounds. Overall, I think this fight is just too close to call. I would predict that there's not going to be a unanimous winner. I think this is going to be very much a split decision. These two helmets are very alike, and I can see that brand loyalty, whether you've had a Shuey in the past or a Shubath, or whether you think you're a Shubath head or a Shuey head, I think that's going to play a part here. Unlike the C4, I would say that the C5 is not going to let you down. And in that, I am 95% confident. The Neotech, of course, is still up there. It has not been outclassed by the C5. But in the C5, the Neotech has come up against a very formidable opponent. If you want to look at some of our other flip lid helmets, then visit motorlegends.com. If you want to learn more about the C5, then if you click on one of the links on the screen, sometimes they're up there, sometimes they're down there, that will take you to a dedicated C5 section. There you can check out the spec in a little bit more detail, you can check availability, and obviously if you want to buy a helmet there and then, you can do that at that time. When you buy from us, we try to make the process as simple, straightforward, and risk-free as we possibly can. There's no delivery charge on any item of protective wear that you buy from us. Returns are totally free, and what's more, we give you a full 12 months in which to decide whether you do want to return something to us. Our price promise is the best in the business. John Lewis was rightly famed for its never knowingly undersold price promise. We go one stage better. If you can find any retailer selling anything that we sell at a price that is lower than ours, we will beat that retailer's price by a full 10%. There are a few terms and conditions associated with what we call our price beat. But if you are going to price beat us, then I suggest you go over to the website and check out what those terms and conditions are. If in the future you'd like to receive bulletins from us about new product launches, then again, go to the website. At the top of every page, there's a piece of script that says newsletter sign up. Click on there. Within seconds, you'll be in business. In future, you'll receive our email bulletins. If however you prefer to get your information videographically, that is to say in this form, then we'd be delighted if you want to become a subscriber to our YouTube channel. And you can do that by clicking on the button below. Now, this is 2021. Last year, 2020, we gave away to one of our YouTube subscribers a Mutt 125cc motorbike. It was a lovely little cute motorbike that we had customized a little bit to look like a Steve McQueen desert sled. This year, we are going a little bit upmarket. We are giving away a 250cc Fantic Cavallero Scrambler. But we're not giving it away to a YouTube subscriber. We're giving it away to someone who follows us on Facebook. Now, we're recording this at the beginning of November. We are going to be giving the bike away. So this is the beginning of December, not the beginning of November. We're going to be giving the bike away at the very end of the year, before Christmas, just after Christmas. If you want to stand a chance of winning that, you need to go over to Facebook now and obviously follow us. Finally, I'd like to make a play for our little shop here at Motor Legends. It's a fabulous shop. We are based about a mile from the centre of Guildford, a mile from the railway station. It's a small shop. It's got a small footprint. But it's attached to a warehouse where we have more than two million pounds of merchandise arranged over three floors. Technically, that makes this the second largest motorcycle apparel shop in the UK. But we like to see, we like to think that we are far more than just the amount of merchandise we have here in the building. We are about service. We're about personal fitting. If you want to check us out, visit Trustpilot. We have the highest five star ranking in the business. When you visit us, we'll serve you only the finest Italian Illy coffee or we'll serve you proper Yorkshire tea in a proper teapot. And who knows, if you're lucky, you might just get, you might just get to sample, sorry, I'm messing up this evening. You might just get to sample one of our delicious motorcycle-shaped shortbread biscuits. Anyway, this has been Chris. I hope to talk to you again soon.